67. In the summer, usually what we do is we sing through all the verses anyways. <laughs> so we're doing the history thing. So the composition is two, I mean, all, all, all of it is two part being the words and then the, the, the mm -hmm. tune that goes along with them. The people choose the hymns they want or how, how does that work? Um, I, I choose them based on the lectionary. Um, oh, uh -huh. I try to make it fit with whatever scripture we're talking about. Oh, okay. So, um, but I, I am taking, I'm, I'm like taking into consideration people's requests and things that they like. I and see. So, okay. um, all right. and well, do you have any nice. favorites? I, I like them all. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I might have a favorite or two that I might yeah, sure. mention. Okay. I'll see. That'd be great. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Trust and obey. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, just the first two verses on that. First two, yeah, first two verses. When we walk with the Lord in the light of this word, what a glory sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. Then we thought trust and obey trust and obey there is no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey we're only doing the last two verses on the last song
Thank you, Ferris. Maybe I'm just a little bit too loud. Just, just bring me down just a touch. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Harmony Grove. We're delighted that you're here this morning for this hour of worship. We want a reminder to you about the, uh, the pads in the pews there. If you take the opportunity to fill that out, we would appreciate it. And also, if you are a first-time visitor with us, welcome. And we're glad that you're with us. And if you would fill out that attendance pad and give us some information, we'll send some information to you about Harmony Grove. But again, thank you for being here, being a part of this hour of worship. We're going to start off with some announcements. I think I'm going to get you guys out of the way, and then I'll, I'll see if I can remember what I've got. Okay, Meredith? Good morning. Uh, I just have a quick reminder about our community survey that's going on, or our congregational survey that's going on. A couple weeks ago, we had a listening lunch where uh, a lot of you filled out the survey already, uh, but then we put it out online for anybody who wasn't able to attend in person, our online community, uh, and just our n people who were helping out who weren't able to uh, actually speak during the, the luncheon. Uh, so if you would, if you have not already, please fill out, take a moment to fill out the survey. It's eight questions. Uh, it'll take you about eight minutes if you, if you give it some thought, or it can take you as long as you want. Um, but please do this. It is available online at the, on the What's Happening. Uh, but you can also see me after the service today and scan this handy-dandy QR code, and it'll pop up for you right there on your phone. Uh, and you can do it before you leave church today. Thank you. That's for those of us that know what, how to use our phone, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Gretchen? Well, we do have a VBS registration available online, and I am still looking for a volunteer to be our mascot puppet for the year. So if that sounds like something that you might want to do, um, you're, you know, hiding behind the stage, so you don't really have to be up in front of people, but you, uh, I just need your voice and your hands. I'm looking for that. Thanks. Okay. Um, in your bulletins, you'll find an insert about Wesley Woods. This is the Sunday where Wesley Woods takes up, for, takes up their annual offering. So if you are so inclined, uh, follow the information along there. Also a reminder that Tuesday, Joy Club, 1130 uh, in Pollard Hall. And this coming Sunday, leadership board meeting. Uh, also, if you have, a, a, not agenda items, but if you have a report, would you get that report in by Wednesday? We would very much appreciate that. No other announcements? Sure. Okay. If you would stand and join me in our call to worship. Before God spoke the first word of creation, there was love. Before anyone entered the sanctuary this morning, love was already here. When we draw our last breath and leave this world, love will be waiting for us. That love is God. Now, now let, let us, us worship, worship God. God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this place. We thank you for the blessings of life, and we thank you for our time together. Now continue to bless us as we go forward this day and through our week. This and all things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And if you would join me for our opening hymn this morning, it's number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Breathe. 
receive suddenly return and never never more thy temples leave thee we would be always blessing serve thee be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee, changed from glory into glory, till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee, lost in wonder, love, and praise. Would the children please come forward for our children's message this morning? And they are probably downstairs in the nursery because we do have nursery today. <laughs> but I'm just going to deliver my children's sermon from here. Um, if you would look up on the screen, this is my mom, Pam. She is a beautiful, strong, courageous woman, and I admire her and love her greatly. And I was going to talk about strong and courageous women this morning in my children's sermon. Just close your eyes and think of all of the women in your life that you have encountered that exemplify this. Strength, wisdom, love, Let's remember some of the wise women from history and what they did to make a difference. Madame Curie was the woman who invented x-rays. Because of her, we have a way to look inside our bodies and see our bones. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to fly by herself across the Atlantic Ocean. She loved flying and set many records. Pearl S. Buck, a woman who lived in China, wrote wonderful books, helped others, and adopted nine children. She was a very wise woman. Rosa Parks was a woman who worked to make sure all people had certain rights, no matter what color their skin was. This brave woman worked to make freedom possible for all. Helen Keller was a brave woman who was blind and deaf. She learned sign language and also read, um, read and wrote using Braille. And perhaps you might have seen Braille, some tiny bumps, like on the inside of an elevator. She worked very hard to help other people who had lost their sight. Pocahontas was a wise Native American woman who used friendship to make peace between Native American people and the settlers. The Bible tells us about another strong wise woman, and her name is Esther. She was a beautiful Jewish queen, and she learned that her people were going to be harmed. She went to the king and asked in a very brave and wise way for his help. The king agreed to help her. Even to this day, the Jewish people celebrate a holiday each year as the days in which the Jews had rest from their enemies and turned them from sorrow to gladness. And that's from the book of Esther, chapter 9, verse 22. These are just a few of the women who have made a difference in our world. And all of us can learn from these women and give thanks for the strong, wise women in our lives. Happy Mother's Day to all of the strong, wise, amazing, and wonderful mothers out there. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for making our beautiful mothers. May you bless their special day with peace, love, and joy. Lord, we also pray for mothers who have lost their children and children who have lost their mothers. Cover their hearts with your loving grace and mercy so that they may be comforted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today's Bible reading comes from Psalm 66, verses 8 through 20. Hear these words. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our back. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with the burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. Those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fatted calves with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Selah. Come in here, all you who fear God and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened, but truly God has listened. He has heard the words of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. It's the word of God for the people of God. Would our ushers come forward to receive today's tithes and offerings? If you are going to give today, you can do so in a couple different ways. Uh, the ushers will be around shortly with the plates, and you can put uh, your offering in here, or you are able to give online via our website or our newsletter. Uh, the ushers will walk around, and then we will sing our doxology and bless this offering. Almighty God, we lift this offering to you. Do with it what would be pleasing unto you. Bless it so that it can be a blessing to us and in our community. Multiply it so that it can multiply your witness in our lives. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
come now in our service to a time of, or an opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. And as we have done over these last few weeks, I'm coming down to the rail, and I invite you to come up as well if you'd like to. Uh, there's no, you don't have to. All I'm doing is offering this opportunity for you to come to the rail. But as we do, I want you to be thankful uh, for the moms in your life. Uh, a little bit of a special prayer this morning for moms, but also I just want you to be uh, especially mindful of the moms in your life. With all of that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of mothers. May these bearers of life also be bearers of your word. May they teach and train up their children in the way that they should go, so that when they're old, they will not depart from it. Even when the children are already grown, help mothers to sow the seeds that will bear the fruit of your spirit. Just as a mother's work is never done, and her prayers for her children will never end, a piece of her art is always with them. God, today we celebrate mothers, but the truth is we ought to celebrate them every day. Their love manifests in small, subtle ways each and every day. In the mundane that sometimes we can take for granted, please allow us not to do that. We thank you for their sacrificial love. We ask that you uplift them today. Thank you for the gift that they are in our lives. And when our mothers are tired, Lord, give them strength. When they feel alone, give them comfort. When they feel overwhelmed with the challenges of parenting, help them to know peace. In their darkest moments, be their light. At times in our lives, our mothers are everything to us, meeting our every need. We ask, for, ask you today, Lord, to provide for them with whatever gift they need. Lord, it is in gratitude that we ask all of this for the moms today. Lord, grant us your blessing, that we may pass your blessings on to those around us. Be ever present in our lives, Fill us with your Holy Spirit this day. This day especially, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, life is challenging enough as it is. But we find ourselves sometimes running a race and not knowing where the finish line is. Help us to see where it is you would have us to go. Point us in the right direction. Keep us ever mindful that Wherever we go, whatever we do, you are with us always. In fact, Lord, you are usually two steps ahead. May we be mindful of this each and every day. Lord, as we gather today, we ask that you would be with those that are on our prayer list. That list that's scrolling on the screen, the list that was printed in the bulletin, and the list that may rest heavy upon the heart this day. Be with each and every one of these. May they feel your love and your grace and your mercy. But most importantly today, Lord, may they feel your peace and comfort. May they feel healing. May they feel like they are not alone because they are not. You are with them each and every day and every step along the way. Lord, we continue to pray for this church and what we mean to this community and how we can serve this community as we continue in our visioning process enlighten us help us to see the path that you have laid out for us most importantly lord not only may we see the path but may we follow may we follow where you lead and may we be your servants wherever it is you lead us Lord, on this day, on this special Mother's Day, may we give you thanks. Give you thanks that you so, so long ago gave us your son, Jesus, to be.
be with us, to teach us, to die for us, and to come back again. And Lord, today, it is in Jesus' name that we pray the prayer he taught us so long ago, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power Thou shalt choose. You are my all of me. Take my life, it's all for thee. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at the feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Here am I, all of me. Take my life, it's all for Thee. Take my life, let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. morning again. And again, happy Mother's Day. Before I get started, uh, I want to share something. Jean, I'm going to pick on you. Jean Burris. Uh, she called me out when I was sitting in the, in the narthex just a little while ago, and she pointed out to me something that I thought was a true blessing today. And that was, excuse me, 64 years ago, Mother's Day.
64 years ago, she and Don had their first date. At church, across the way, on Mother's Day, 64 years ago. So I appreciate you sharing that, that with me. That, that is a true blessing to, to each and every one of us. So thank you for that. All right, with that, I want to relate to you a story this morning about Mark Twain. And it goes like this. Mark Twain encountered a ruthless businessman uh, when he was in Boston uh, one summer. Uh, he was traveling along, and, and this guy was bragging. And he bragged that nobody ever, ever got his way once this man set his mind to doing something. So he told Mark Twain, before I die, I'm going to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. I'm going to climb Mount Sinai, and when I get up there, I'm going to read the Ten Commandments at the top of my voice. Not impressed even for just a little bit, Mr. Twain replied, I got a better idea than that. Why don't you stay in Boston and keep those Ten Commandments? The businessman was talking about something that was on his bucket list. But for me, the idea of that story rests upon the idea of obedience. In John chapter 13, Jesus gives his disciples a new commandment. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. In our scripture, which that was not the scripture for today, but in our scripture today, Jesus is going to give those disciples something else new to ponder. So our scripture this morning does indeed come from John, but it comes from the 14th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse, which stand in reverence to the gospel this morning. Hear now the inspired word of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, again, we are a blessed people. You call us your children, and for that we are ever grateful. But sometimes, Lord, we act like little children when we don't follow the rules, when we don't listen, and yes, even sometimes when we rebel against us or against you. Forgive us, Lord, for those times when we think more of ourselves than we think of you. Continue to pour out your grace and love upon us and show us the way. And finally, Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable to you, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. In our reading today, Jesus gives those disciples a new commandment, a new, com a new rule, if you will. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We need to remember that this passage is before Jesus' death and resurrection. The things that Jesus is talking about here have not happened yet. They will happen after the resurrection. But I think the thing that Jesus is talking about when we read between the lines in this passage, well, there are three of them. There's obedience, there's objections, and there are obligations. So if we look at those three, the first one is obedience. What is it about obedience that we as human beings 
have a hard time with. What is it about minding, about following the rules? What does that mean to us? Well, it, to me, it has a lot to do with the idea of doing. As you may have heard in the last couple of weeks, Dr. Charles Stanley passed away. And as I was reading about Dr. Stanley, there was something that he said that fit right in with this idea of, of obedience. He said, obedience to God is defined as doing. Doing what he says, doing when he says, doing how he says, and doing all he says. He said also that anything less is not obedience, but disobedience. You see, our problem, and I'm not just talking about Jim here, I'm talking about all of us as a whole, but our problem is that many times we try to take matters into our own hands. And we try to solve all the problems in our lives and in some cases, in other people's lives. And when we do that, we try to make all the decisions. The problem with that is that when we try to make all the decisions, we're taking God out of the picture, taking God totally out of the picture. And when we take God out of the picture, we are showing disobedience to God. You know, God's not going to lead us astray. Is there anybody in here by a show of hands that can tell me when God has ever led you astray? That's kind of what I thought. God won't lead us astray. And all we need to do is to listen and to follow. We have a lack of obedience, and not only do we have a lack of obedience and the, the will to follow sometimes, but we're also full of objections. How many of you have been in the situation where you didn't feel like doing something and you find a way to object to it or you just don't do it at all? I'm guilty of that. I've done that on a number of occasions. If I didn't want to do it, I found some objection or I just simply did not do it. There's an old story about a little boy who insisted on standing up in the pews during church service. Now, we don't have that. We don't have that here, but I've seen it before. But he insisted on standing up in the pews during the service. After several admonishments, his mother severely threatened him if he stood up again. And you, all of you know what that severely threatened means. As he sat squirming on the pew, he whispered this to his mother. I'm sitting down on the outside, but on the inside, I'm standing up and jumping all over the you see, we find a way to object. In our own way, we find a way to object. I think that we're always questioning. And I want to differentiate between objection and questioning. They're not the same. They're two different things. But questioning and objecting are things that we do. We can find ourselves doubting from time to time. That's just a part of our nature. But questioning, I think, is something that leads to discussion. It leads to answers. Maybe it even sometimes leads to the solving of problems. That's not objection. With doubt, we need to let our faith show us the way. When we have those doubts in the back of our mind, that's when our faith should take the forefront. Objections go beyond questioning and doubting. Trust in the Lord and the way will be made clear. I guess the older I get, the more I, the more I tend to believe that, that the way will be made clear. Because I can look back over the years and see where I had questions, I had doubts, but the way was made clear. So I firmly believe that when we trust in the Lord, the way will be made clear. It may take a little time, it may take a long time, but the way will be made clear. So there, so we all have objections, we are all not necessarily obedient, 
But what about this obligation, this, this third one, this obligation uh, that we find Jesus talking about in this particular passage? You know, Jesus knew when he made these statements that he would be leaving the disciples. And they knew once Jesus was gone, how are they going to carry on? Well, as you know, there was an answer. God was going to send an advocate at the request of Jesus. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. We received the Holy Spirit. Jesus told us that he would not leave us orphaned, and he did not. He sent to us the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to seek and to save the last, the least, and the lost. He came to save all sinners. That's you, me, everybody. And Jesus told his disciples that unless he went away, he could not bring back another helper. Jesus had to leave in order for that advocate to come. Jesus did go away. And in, he, in his place, Jesus left the Holy Spirit, which lives in each and every one of us. Believe it or not, lives within each and every one of us. The disciples and even us today have been left with that advocate, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is what helps keep us carrying on. But what is the obligation? What is the obligation to fulfill? Well, you know the obligation to fulfill, that we need to fulfill. We're asked to serve. We're asked to be God's hands and feet in this community. We're asked to be God's hands and feet even in the entire world. Then you might ask, is that a duty or is it a delight? There's a, there's a story of a young man who was struggling with whether to go through with a, an arranged marriage. You see, in his home country, arranged marriages were the norm. But after living in America, as he had done for quite some time, he was having some second thoughts about this arranged marriage, especially since he had never seen his bride-to-be, never seen or met. Still, when she flew into the airport, he dutifully waited for her, flowers in hand. But he also had a gloomy expression on his face. But when she stepped through the terminal, everything changed. She was beautiful, and that changed his outlook. Suddenly, the gloom, demeanor disappeared. The thought of marrying this woman was no longer a dreaded duty. For him, it was a delight. So you ask, what had changed? Well, he had seen her. He had seen her. Often we serve God out of obligation. We drag ourselves to church, force ourselves to serve others. Now, let me pause and just say that when I'm not talking about Harmony Grove, I'm talking about those other churches. We. Uh, we drag ourselves out and we force ourselves to serve others, but our hearts are not in it. We're like that guy at the airport, grudgingly holding the flowers for God. We're trying to live holy lives, and we know we should, but sometimes it's joyless. There is no delight in it. And what can change that outlook? What can change that attitude? seeing God, seeing God, seeing the beauty all around you, all that God has made, seeing God, and our outlook changes. When we get a vision of who God truly is, suddenly we're energized to do God's work. Once we see the grandeur and the glory, obligation ceases to be a task. Once we grasp God's great love, serving is no longer a duty, it's a joy. So, new rule, 
starting today. See God. See God. Instead of waking up in the morning and thinking it's just another day, why not try another approach? Why not thank God for another day? Another day to be in this world and to serve others. Why not enjoy the beauty that is all around us? Yes, I do believe that even in this busy place we find ourselves in, the hustle and the bustle of this busy everyday life that all of us find ourselves in, we can find beauty. Instead of looking at the negative side of things, why don't we find the positive in every situation? Because I stand here today knowing full well that even in the worst of situations, there is positive. And if we take the time to look for the positive, we will find it. New rule. Let us begin to see God through a new lens. That lens to where we love God and that God's love will shine through us to all that we come in contact with. New rule, see God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would everyone please stand and join me for our closing hymn today, it is number 467, Trust and Obey. And we're going to do the first two verses. Guide us to be the church you desire us to be. Grant us your love and vision for our community. And give us the courage to grow. Amen. Go in grace. Go in peace. But go knowing that God is everywhere. See God. And let people see God through you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay.